I'm ready for the afternoon's presentations. So we have three more presentations this afternoon before we wrap up. Starting with the team from Pakistan, then the Indo-Gangetic Basin, and finally the coordination team. So as this morning you have about 20 minutes for presentation, 10 minutes for discussion, and I'll let you know when it gets near the time that you have to stop, <laughs> if you look like you're not going to stop. But I'm sure your timekeeping will be exemplary. <laughs> Okay, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Pakistan team is working on a uh, rice wheat uh, cropping system. Uh, rice is planted in Pakistan uh, during uh, June and harvested in October. Wheat is uh, planted in Pakistan in November and harvested in April. So there is uh, about one month uh, on both hands uh, when uh, there is no crop in the field. So I will be presenting uh, Pakistan case. This is the map of uh, Punjab. If I use uh, the cursor, this will be more appropriate. This province of Punjab. Province of Punjab is one fourth by area of Pakistan but its population is more than half, more than half the population of Pakistan. Total population of Pakistan uh, uh, now is estimated as 180 million. So this is the largest, uh, largest uh, province uh, regarding to population, but uh, one fourth of uh, whole Pakistan. We have selected uh, five districts uh, from Pakistan, uh, from Punjab. I think cursor is not working, I'll use. These are the fi five districts uh, selected from uh, Punjab province. These provinces are known for uh, rice and wheat production. Therefore, uh, we have selected uh, these five provinces. And if you look at uh, the climatology, uh, these parts, uh, these parts of uh, Punjab, are adjacent to the foothills of Himalayas. As you go down, the rainfall decreases, and here it is uh, f about 50 percent of the northern end. And similarly, precipitation decreases from east to west. And uh, thermal regime is uh, almost uh, uniform. There is. Uh, no significant difference uh, because this is uh, this is a low elevation plane. <coughs> this is now the picture of uh, climate, and uh, if you look at uh, the climate profile, uh, black line is showing the baseline, and uh, green line is showing the simulated one output of uh, GCMs. There is. Uh, there is a visible uh, rise in temperature in both the areas. We have selected uh, two areas uh, from, uh, from these uh, five selected districts. One is uh, the ra rainfall uh, rich area, monsoon rich area, and uh, the southern one is getting a meager amount of rainfall. So here you can see the northern uh, Northern selected site that is not showing a significant change in precipitation regime as compared to the baseline. But uh, rainfall peak is uh, in July and August. And if you look at the growing season of uh, a rice crop, that uh, almost uh, tallies matches with the, the growing season of uh, rice. And uh, southern end is showing a uh, lot of uh, interesting features. If you look at uh, its uh, changes, amount of rainfall is going to increase in the southern belt, and uh, also the monsoon peak 
is going to shift from July to to August. So this uh, this will be this will be a challenge uh, for the agronomists and uh, the breeders to adjust with this uh, change in future. <coughs> Yield prediction data is uh, collected from five strata. As I mentioned that five uh, districts are under study. And uh, from, these, uh, e from each district, uh, two villages were selected. And uh, from those villages, farmers were inter interviewed. And the total farmers, 155, were interviewed and data were collected. If you look at uh, the variation in grain yield, as compared to baseline, this is a blue line is showing the baseline. There is a, a consistent decrease in uh, yield. In yield of rice, if uh, we talk about the mid-century mid RCP 8.5 scenarios. <coughs> this is now the economic uh, picture of uh, that area. This is uh, overall picture. And uh, if we go for uh, individual stratum, so this is uh, strata 1, strata 2, strata 3, and strata 4, 5. So this is uh, showing uh, the overall picture, which is uh, sum of the five strata. These are the numerical uh, figures which uh, have been obtained from uh, statistical analysis. So this number is showing uh, standard error in bracket. And uh, these are uh, the future simulated output in kg, time average uh, relative output. You can see there is uh, a lot of uh, variation. So this is uh, now the summary of uh, Mons, uh, economic impact, uh, if we look at uh, the gainers, so the percent, we have uh, only worked on uh, RCP 8.5, and uh, gainers vary from 10% uh, to 24%. And uh, if you look at uh, percentage uh, gain and uh, percentage uh, loss, so the net loss is uh, gain minus loss. Net loss is uh, around uh, 33%. So this is a significant uh, loss. And uh, this is the zone of uh, gainers. And uh, this is the zone of uh, losers. Now the scope of uh, home stretch, uh, home stretch uh, Excise. This is a uh, rice feed uh, cropping system. This is, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, this is the area which is uh, densely populated, and uh, they depend upon uh, the agriculture. And uh, rice and wheat, uh, these are the two major crops uh, which are uh, providing the livelihood uh, to the people. And uh, this system uh, is, in fact, uh, especially rice, this is uh, second largest uh, export of Pakistan after cotton. So this area is very, very important uh, for Pakistan. And we are working uh, for mid-century situation uh, using the climate scenarios uh, of eight point, RCP 8.5 using uh, five GCMs. We are trying to... Yeah, compute the impact uh, using uh, climate change uh, effects on the shield and uh, the economic conditions uh, of people. This, is, uh, this will be without uh, adaptation. And uh, then with the uh, adaptation package, this will be studied. Uh, extensive farm surveys will be conducted. Previously, we have uh, completed this exercise uh, for rice crop only. And now, on the same fields, wheat farmers will also be interviewed. And uh, 150 farmers uh, will, be, uh, will be supplying the information uh, for uh, this data.
Moving to the adaptation package, uh, this is uh, uh, this is a uh, well-conceived uh, thought uh, which uh, has been put together, and uh, we have used uh, four parameters, especially biophysical parameters, policy variables, and uh, then socioeconomic parameters. And in consultation of uh, our uh, our stakeholder, Mr. Khan, we are very grateful he was with us. And uh, fortunately, he is not simply the farmer, he is an agriculture graduate, and he is a, a farmer who is practice, practicing uh, the farming. And uh, his uh, input, uh, input was uh, really a great wisdom. And uh, with his uh, consultation, and the experts uh, like uh, Garrett, Alex, uh, we have uh, we have finalized uh, these uh, adaptation uh, measures. So, in uh, biophysical factors, uh, we are uh, as we are expecting uh, the changes are shifting uh, weather patterns. So, we have to adjust. Uh, are just the cropping pattern uh, along with so there will be there will be a major uh, change in cropping pattern so we will be adjusting uh, in fact uh, the time of sowing or uh, the time of uh, uh, adjusting the time of uh, planting to and fro from uh, the uh, from the present conditions and uh, in some areas, uh, rice can be replaced by other crops uh, if uh, there will be some shortage of uh, water visible in the future. And then uh, improved cultivars, uh, that will be an approach where uh, we will be involving uh, the breeders with us. Improved agriculture practices uh, which uh, include uh, high efficiency irrigation system and uh, also the rich, rich pad uh, technology integrated uh, pest management practices. So using uh, these measures, we will be moving towards uh, improved uh, agriculture practices. In uh, policy variables uh, in Pakistan right now, the water is not priced uh, uh, water is not priced uh, to the optimum level. Almost uh, there is negligible price uh, which is charged from the farmers and therefore there is a lot of pressure on the groundwater and uh, the surface water is almost uh, free to use. So sub subsidy on uh, critical inputs, uh, especially at the time of uh, sowing, seed should be available, fertilizer should be available, and during the crop's life cycle, the pesticides and in insecticides should be available. Efficient, uh, efficient use of uh, inputs, uh, especially the fertilizers and seeds, should be available. And uh, output uh, yields should be marketed uh, uh, in a nice manner. Farmers should not be discouraged always. Uh, they should be encouraged uh, when they uh, harvest their final produce. There will be government uh, interventions uh, also in agriculture sector, especially the farm to market uh, roads. Those should be con constructed so that uh, the final yields should be transferred to the market, uh, market places. Implementation of uh, good agriculture practices, especially in the case of uh, rice, because rice is uh, the highest water consuming crop uh, right now. And there are experiments going on to save the water from rice crop and to divert that uh, amount of water to the other crops. There should be farmers, farmers, uh, farmers friendly trade policy and uh, that policy will uh, encourage the farmers and uh, maybe from the farm level, the yields will be picked up uh, at uh, a reasonable price. Then interventions uh, from socioeconomic point of view, 
these are these are very important uh, we will uh, try to adopt the diversification uh, to avoid the risk uh, for example if there is uh, a poor crop or the crop failure due to due to some climatic reasons or uh, the other other reasons then there should be some uh, alternates uh, alternatives uh, available with the farmers so we will encourage uh, that uh, there should be poultry like uh, situations substituted aquaculture and uh, bee culture optimum use of uh, inputs uh, right now at at this stage uh, farmers uh, have been using fertilizers and insecticides without uh, without any scientific planning so the extension workers and uh, agriculture experts will be communicating with them and they will be using uh, a right dose of uh, fertilizers seeds and pesticides to get uh, the maximum yield uh, from their uh, fields participatory management approach so this is a very effective approach uh, in some areas of pakistan this is being practiced and uh, very good results uh, have been uh, have been achieved so these practices will be promoted uh, especially the fa uh, farmers associations and uh, the farmers clubs all farm income opportunities will be encouraged agroforestry will be uh, encouraged uh, this is uh, this is uh, sometimes uh, the production to the crops and also the income generating uh, practice if uh, some rows uh, are bounding the field uh, are grown uh, by the fruit trees like uh, mango or uh, citrus that uh, gives a lot of uh, economic benefit and uh, the, those uh, work uh, work as uh, the wind shelters uh, shelter belts and uh, wind breaks also for their crops so other measures will be use of it it tools uh, in climate and uh, market data sharing agro climatic uh, advisory services uh, should be very efficient to provide the information about uh, the time of rain time of harvesting time of planting and uh, times uh, best time of uh, spraying there will be there will be an interaction of interaction among uh, the stakeholders and uh, that is already existing but it will be further promoted this is uh, a delivery of uh, uh, deliverables uh, by february 2014 climate change uh, scenarios will be developed uh, using uh, using all sorts of uh, data climate models uh, will be compared and uh, economic models will be applied to develop the reps and uh, then in publication uh, sector books uh, book chapter will be contributed uh, to uh, to the agmip uh, chapter and then peer reviewed uh, papers will be produced which will be published in uh, impact journals newspaper articles will be published for awareness and uh, we have uh, already developed uh, agmip uh, agmip uh, pakistan website and uh, that website will be further expanded and uh, the users will be using even the data which is uh, now being produced uh, through modeling process uh, by registering themselves uh, on that uh, website now coming to the ideas uh, for extension we are uh, now working on rice feed system but uh, there are two major uh, two major cropping systems uh, which uh, we have not yet touched they, there is a mixed uh, wheat uh, cropping system and cotton wheat cropping system these are very very important they cannot be overlooked uh, these are uh, the pillars of uh, pakistan agro economy and uh, we will focus on uh, the production system as a whole and uh, we will uh, recommend uh, the alternate uh, 
crops which will be climate resilient. This, uh, this has been conceived after consultation with our uh, stakeholder. And uh, yes, we understand that sugarcane is a whole year crop and this is consuming, uh, consuming, consuming uh, largest amount of water. Water is uh, the scarest com commodity in Pakistan climate. So we will try to uh, try to recommend uh, alternatives uh, for that one, and uh, then the project will be upscaled. Right now, uh, we are not uh, touching uh, any rain-fed area. So in the next uh, uh, next extension phase, we will upscale the project and we will include uh, rain-fed. Uh, belt which is producing a wheat crop. Stakeholders engagement is very important. Uh, already we have uh, very good relations with the planners and policy makers and these relations have been uh, recently developed. Uh, these were not uh, the old relations and uh, now the awareness uh, is improving and uh, we will be involving uh, the progressive farmers along with uh, policy makers and planners and extension department, which is government department. And uh, we plan to strengthen the pres present links uh, by involving uh, more research organizations, non-governmental NGOs, civil society, farming, uh, 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 farmers uh, associations, and uh, market agents uh, in our st stakeholders. And uh, then dissemination and outreach. Uh, we will. Uh, we are. Uh, we are now. We are now dissemi uh, disseminating the information uh, through seminars, workshops, and uh, publications. This is uh, not uh, effective tool. We will uh, reach to the farmers' field to convey this uh, these messages, uh, which are uh, carried by the climate change and impact on agriculture production. In future plans, uh, we, are, uh, we are planning uh, to reach the, uh, reach the policy makers and uh, planners through policy brief, briefs and farmers through festivals uh, at, the, at the onset of uh, each cropping season. On-farm trainings will be conducted and demonstrations on the field will be conducted and farmer, farmers' days in different areas will be organized. Thank you very much. This was the last slide. Thank you very much indeed, and that was in good time. So we have time for questions, please. If no one has a question, I will give you one. So can you, anyone just explain, oh, not that one. Where's the economic one? So I'm just wondering if you have an explanation for why in your substrata some of those were, oh it's not the one, but some of your substrata were gainers by 20% versus some were only gain, some 10% of gainers. Do you know the, the biophysical di reason why you had such a wide range of responses to the TOA or to the yield advantages? Okay, I'll ask my economic colleagues to answer this question. Yes, we are using different strata, and these strata are uh, are having uh, they are uh, heterogeneous with uh, from each other. So that is why we are getting the uh, 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 the uh, relative yield different from ranging from uh, uh, about 0.58 to 0.79. These are the uh, different strata having different agroecological ecological right. reasons. So they're different agroclimatic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Soils are the, especially this Hafsabad condition, the, this is the best area in Punjab where the soil and the climate, they favor the rice crop. I question back here. So the first, f f continuing on with P uh, Peter's question here. So the farm climate routine was used here to get different climates uh, at these 155 farms, or was this just soils and management at this point? Yeah, the farm climates uh, have been produced. Uh, Good. All right, that, that's all I need here. Um, the question I had uh, was actually on the adaptation package at the end. Um, there was, that's a very ambitious adaptation package in terms of turning them into parameters for the models. 
Um, and I think, yeah, so here we are. So what we need to do maybe is decide which ones of these go into the wrap, uh, or what I should say, into the uh, current production system with trend, let's say, and which go into the adaptation package itself. Uh, and and that I, the way I would at least start to organize that would be things that seem to be specifically uh, climate adaptation. So something like uh, subsidy on critical inputs, maybe not, but something like uh, surface water policy, maybe yes. So. <clears throat> Yeah, actually, uh, these are the, there are different variables we have shown here. But ultimately, these variables are going to affect uh, a few uh, out indicators. Like, if there are subsidies, there are uh, uh, good pro uh, there, there are subsidies, good markets, or uh, the better products. This will uh, uh, affect the output market. And if there are subsidies on the input, it will affect the input price. It, relatively, like if we have the change in crop, uh, cropping pattern or the uh, good cultivars or improved agricultural practices, it will ultimately affect the yield. Yes. So all these are will be combined in the shape of the yield, prices, uh, farm yes. area, like that. Yeah, I understand that. But I, I think what we need to determine is what comes into the, uh, the production system with trend and what is in the adaptation package itself, because there will, there will be difference in core question two and core question three, uh, so having that clear will be helpful. And, and the focus on climate also is a... That, that's, the climate focus helps you determine which goes where. Alex, right now we have done it uh, without adaptation, yes. but, but with the adaptation, I think uh, the new products will come on. I think, um, uh, thank you very much for the presentation and team for the, for the great work. Um, I think that we're beginning to see that we can now think about how regions may compare uh, in terms of their impacts with each other. Um, and so these results, I think of any that have been presented so far, are, are um, more significant. Of course, these are still very preliminary results everywhere, but, we're, but we're, you, I think we're starting to get an inkling that this is not really a question; it's a comment. Um, that um, you know, we'll, we really will be able to do a lot of learning. So, and then so that the teams, like the climate team across all the region, can then look to see well, what are the climate differences in the in the scenarios for the different regions, and why might these results also differ region to region? Yeah, that will be very interesting uh, if uh, intra-region and uh, inter-regional uh, inter uh, comparison could be done. Okay, good. <coughs> Any last questions? No, all suffering from too much lunch, even if, <laughs> even, even if you didn't have enough time to enjoy it completely. Okay, so let us thank Pakistan very much.